Okay, welcome back everybody. Quick, I guess this is gonna call an armory chat. I wanted to uh, just share something with uh, the viewer, uh, an item that came in the armory today. Uh, we've been kind of looking at this for a while. Uh, this is a bipod made by GRS out of Europe. Um, if you are familiar with kind of what we do around here, you'll see that uh, we do a lot of uh, stuff with GRS products. Um, we're a fan of them, we buy the stuff. But um, GRS makes custom uh, they're a, 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 a custom uh, rifle stock maker uh, in Europe. Uh, they used they started with wood and went to some th synthetics, and they're obviously uh, gaining ground here in the U.S. Uh, this is a bipod system that uh, goes into a spigot onto the what I what we have the GRS pro <clears throat> the GRS product that we have here is the Ragnarok. Um, it's a chassis system here behind me now. When we ordered this, we saw this pop up, I don't know, maybe last year. Uh, I was, um, I had some questions about it, and I figured if I had questions, you guys would have questions too. Uh, the first question uh, or concern that I had was, I was afraid this was going to be too small. Um, I have seen uh, bipods kind of formatted like this before, and it's always kind of hard to tell on the internet, uh, you know, like exactly how, how big something is. Because the way this uh, bipod works with a spigot is your gun's going to hang down below the bipod. And so, you know, it, it, it's more stable. It's not above the apex. It's below the apex. Kind of get that. Well, you know, plus if you're a bigger guy, you kind of got a bigger chest, you know, you can't really get real low to the ground like some people, you know, in the magazines can. So, you know, the reality is, as you uh, get into a precision rifle game, you realize you're a bigger guy. You kind of need a bigger bipod. You got to, what you need is satisfactory for a bipod, just to even your minimums is going to be higher than someone who's like five foot four. So, well, this thing is huge. Um, I would venture to guess this is probably the biggest bipod, you know, that we've ever owned. Um, might even be the heaviest. Maybe it's the world's heaviest bipod. It's not that heavy. Um, it's uh, primary, uh, I, I guess it's aluminum and steel, but, uh, a couple things that are different than some of the other bipods that are kind of formatted like this out of Europe. Um, that that was a, a bonus or, or, or interest, interested us in why we wanted to get it. In particular, would be the feet. So we had ordered a bipod like this some years ago. I think Sako is for Sako guns. And the problem with the those bipods, we, we sent them back, was the feet are, they're like ski pads. They're you know, they just, they're smooth. And, you know, if you want to look, if you're in the United States, I think this is finally caught on in Europe, but around here, we load our bipods. You know, we load that gun up. Well, if the thing is just going to skid forward until it actually hits something, you know, that's kind of, you know, not really desirable. Well, this GRS bipod, if you look closely at it, you can see it has the flat skid pads if that's what you want. But interesting, I have to be careful because there's another point about this these legs, they invert and they're clawed. So you don't have to, um, you know, take them on, take them off and put different, put different ends on them like, a, like an Atlas bipod. I would have to, these are rubber feet, which are pretty handy, but the, you know, to switch, to switch to like uh, spikes, I would have to, you know, take this thing apart and put them on and change it back and forth. This kind of works in the field. So now the downside to this thing is and I guess this is this is not a complaint, this is more of a compliment to GRS. Those spikes, let me show you this. Those spikes on the feet, they are no joke. Those corners, they are razor sharp. Like, I've already cut myself once, it draws blood. So, I'm gonna let it stand for now, leave it alone. You know, it's anodized, I'm not gonna touch it. Uh, or it's coated, whatever it's made out of. If it becomes an issue as to where it's tearing up gear or maybe it's just a little bit too sharp, um, you know, we'll go ahead and we'll, maybe we'll knock the edge off of them. But here's the thing, I'd rather have it too sharp and have the ability to knock it off than have it not really be sharp enough or optimal enough that I feel like it's not as good as it could be. So actually, I'm not kicking GRS for that. I think that's a bonus. Um, also, the, uh, the controls on these, uh, I think the, I think these are very uh, very intuitive. Instead of it being a push button, it's a uh, it's a it's a button that you depress down, and that's how you telescope 
or that's how you uh, open and close the legs. So let me go ahead and show this on the uh, on the rifle and the spigot. Let me get you one second. All right, I'm doing this with a suppressor on the gun because I kind of wanted to see how it would clear. Drops on like that through the spigot system and goes down. So, so you can see some size here for comparison. You know, that's a, you know, that's a pretty, you know, pretty, pretty decent bipod. That's all the way closed. And if you need it shorter than that, those of you that may not quite understand this, you can do this or even do this. So, um, you know, pretty handy. You cannot, what you can't do is these legs do not bend back be, uh, beyond 90. So basically it's straight up and down or forward. You, they, don't, they don't go past a, a 180. So um, it does clear the bipod very well. I'm doing this because I'm trying to hold the rifle in frame, it's a little bit more difficult. So even with the, uh, or, you know, clears a suppressor. I mean, certainly you could get a bigger suppressor. Um, this is probably a little big and a little heavy for most, I'd call standard calibers that people would, you know, use. But, you know, again, this gun, you can take this up, you know, we have 300 PRC, you can get 338 Lapua, some of the big boomers. You know, having the ability to, you know, have that rock solid, you know, center of gravity on, on that bipod. I mean, I think it's, I think this is a real win. So, um, it is not, if you are asking and to touch on it some more, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to show this as well. This spigot right here literally comes right on, right off. So being as heavy and as big as it is, I wouldn't want to leave it on the rifle all the time you do leave that plug on there. So let me address that again in a second. The, if you're wondering what the socket is um, for this, for the plug, the, I would call this, a, it's called VersaPod. That's how we refer to it. I don't know what the actual name is, but whenever you see a VersaPod system, it's a, well, no, I'll just show it to you. It'll have a, a plug with a uh, stop nut right there at the bottom of the plug. That's a telltale sign that's VersaPod. Those are real popular in Europe. I'm not so certain there. That, I'm not so certain they're that popular here in the United States, but uh, this, if you, so if you already have a gun that has that system, uh, you know, this would just go ahead and plug right on it. So downsides to this, um, this is not the bipod I would expect you want to take sheep hunting in the mountains. Just saying. Um, this is more of a precision rifle, you know, I hate to use the word tactical, but you know, this is a heavier piece of equipment, a heavier piece of gear. Um, if you want to, and as far as uh, how, how far does it extend, again, large bipod, let's see if we can get back here. Is it, oh, it's this way, hold on. Oh, no, is, am I doing it the wrong way? Oh, you know what? You push it, I thought it was a lever. Again, we literally just got this. So, I mean, this thing, pretty big bipod so uh, not something if you're uh, if you're weight conscious this is certainly not going to be your first choice uh, it is also not a um, not a cheap product nothing made to this level of durability is going to be inexpensive and then when you factor in it's coming in from Europe it's going to be big bucks so you know to get to tell the story um, this bipod us we're over 500 bucks for this thing you know which to me is a lot of money for a bipod. I know there's, you know, ones that some of the sniper guys, some of the SWAT guys around here use that are even way high dollar than that, significantly, two or three times than that. But, um, you know, for me at my level, you know, $500 is kind of a, a big bipod. Um, as far as how it's constructed, I notice here on the, uh, on the legs, it has, uh, uh, you know, uh, hex head bolts on it. So I would imagine that you could take this apart and either replace parts on it or possibly even, I wouldn't be surprised if you could even get extended legs or maybe even shorter legs, I don't know. But uh, that looks like it's, you were so inclined you could get into it. I could be wrong, not really certain, but. So anyway, I wanted to show you guys what I consider probably, at least for us, the heaviest bipod we've ever owned, the GRS uh, 
uh, spigot bipod system that we're using on the Ragnarok. So if you want to see any more stories or pictures or links of anything we discuss or the guns that we shoot, go to our website at john1911.com. That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day.